Okay. Um, this is the last uh, lesson, the uh, last new material to be covered before uh, test two. Um, and then the, uh, on, so 4.5. Uh, the next class on Thursday, it will be nothing more than a review of uh, practice test two. Um, and then the following Friday, so October 30th, is when test two is due. Um, so next week, I will not be holding regular class meetings to cover new material. Um, I will be on hand in case anyone, um, at, at our usual class times, in case anyone has any questions about the test. Um, but um, otherwise, that's, uh, that's it. And then We'll just have a few more lessons uh, in November, um, and that'll be everything. <clears throat> okay, so now um, I'll get the screen share going. Okay, not gonna lie, this lesson is a pain. Uh, the problems are uh, uh, quite tedious uh, in comparison to those from, from other lessons. Um, there's there's a, a lot to unpack here. Um, and uh, there, never, there aren't very many problems, but uh, most of the problems in this lesson are fairly time consuming. So we wanna keep in mind when taking a test. Um, actually, I'm going to take a look at the test. Uh, uh, the practice test. Um, and I'm not sure where I put it. Ah, here it is. Because um, the, the test is uh, composed of problems basically randomly chosen. Um, uh, from all the lessons happening since uh, test one. Um, to see which problems from this lesson are on a test. Um, okay, uh, just a couple. There are 15 problems in total on test two. Uh, on, uh, um, so a number of these problems are about uh, x or min of some function which you were doing already, but, uh, but what's going on in this case is there's several variables under consideration and you have to use whatever information is given in a problem to try to eliminate all the variables but one, because in this class, you're only working with, know, know how to perform calculus operations on functions that, that depend on one variable. So if you have more than one, then you have to eliminate all the other ones and just work with, with that one. Um, and uh, this uh, first problem here, um, illustrates that, um, that you are um, uh, constructing a, uh, a shipping crate, uh, so also a large shipping crate, and um, you have a constraint that this is what the volume is going to be, so 3,456 cubic feet. Um, and you know how much uh, material costs for the uh, uh, top and the sides, um, and then uh, also of the bottom. So the material, material for the bottom has a different cost per square foot than the top and sides. Um, and uh, so you have uh, these uh, parameters and you're trying to find the dimensions of a crate that'll minimize total cost. So uh, it's a rectangular shipping crate. So you're looking at uh, you know, length times width times height. Um, so if I uh, illustrate this, Okay. Oh, wait. All right. So, um, so, so, so here, uh, so here it is. We have the uh, height h, and then um, 
the, the base is given to be a square, because normally you'd have length times width times height, um, but length and width are, the, meant, are already constrained to be the same. Um, so we have uh, a side length S for the, the square base. So it's these two variables we need, that we need to find, um, but we need to have a function. We need, we need to express the cost um, of building this crate in terms of only one of these variables. And then we can use this information that the volume is this to solve for the other one. So here's the relationship between the two unknowns, uh, S and H. Um, that the uh, volume would be so length times width times height, so that's S times S times H, S squared H. And we are given that that is uh, 3456. So if we can just find out the value of one of these variables, S or H, then we can use this equation to solve uh, for the other one. Um, so what we do now is we express the thing you're trying to find a minimum of, which is the cost, in terms of both S and H, because uh, that, that's easier to starting point, and then use this equation to eliminate one of those variables, and then we have a, a function of the other one. Um, so, um, so whatever dimensions we have for the top, uh, this, this will have an area of S squared, so S squared square feet, and it's $2 per square foot for the top. So 2S squared is the cost of the top. Um, the bottom, same area, but different cost, $6 per square foot. Um, and then each one of these sides, the area is H times S. And, um, and that's also $2 per square foot. So each side has this cost. Um, so, um, so now, and we have four sides. So this is the total cost. So here we have the top, the bottom is more expensive per square foot, and then the four sides that cost this much. So if we, um, simplify that, um, then this is what we have. So 8s squared plus 8sh. Now, this is what we want to find a minimum of. Um, however, it still depends on uh, two variables. Uh, we need to use this equation to get rid of one of the variables. Um, so how we can proceed with that is we can take this equation and express h in terms of s squared. So here we have to take this equation and uh, divide both sides by s squared. Then I can have a h in terms of s squared. Now I can take this and substitute it up here. So so now I've uh, taken that expression for h and substituted for h right here, and then we clean this up. So then this is our function that depends only in the side length and it expresses a total cost. So what's interesting is here, this term, as S increases, this part of the cost increases, but also as S increases, this part of the cost decreases because it's in the denominator. So these two terms are kind of competing against each other. So we need to find the right value of S that makes the sum of these as small as possible. So we do what we've done in previous lessons. We take the derivative. All right, so here's our function again, same one. Um, all right, so here's this power rule. And then this is 27,648 times S to the minus one. Uh, so you can think of it that way, or you can remember that the derivative of one over S is minus one over S squared. We've seen that come up lately a number of lessons in this chapter, a number of problems. Uh, so it's one of those things that's good to keep in mind. If you see one over S, just know this derivative is minus one over S squared. Um, so this is our derivative. And then uh, to find uh, the minimum, we 
we set it equal to zero. So doing a lot of the same things in previous lessons, we just have this context of a uh, shipping crate and it's well, several variables. So we set this equal to zero. All right, so there's our derivative there. And then we'll just uh, do a little algebra here. To move that to the other side. Multiply both sides by S squared and then divide by 16. You want to get S cubed by itself. Um, and uh, so this divided by 16 gives us 1728, which happens to be a perfect cube. Not that I expect you to know that, but you can always have your calculator tell you. Um, so S turns out to be 12. So that is the side length for the um, top and bottom. Um, so the, so the, the, the top and bottom of the base will be 12 by 12. So then the only thing left to do is find a remaining dimension that is the height. So we have our equation from that from before. Um, so, uh, so here I have this equation for the volume and substitute uh, our value of S in there. So we have uh, 12 squared, that's 144. So if we divide both sides by that, then that's our H, and that also works out to be a nice number. We get uh, 24. Um, so then we're done. Uh, we have our dimensions. That's what the problem asked for. It asked for all three dimensions, length times, width times, height. So it's 12 by 12 uh, by 24. So to summarize the process, whatever it is, identify what it is you want to find a max or min of, and you want to express that in terms of whatever variables you have. In this case, we have uh, two for the uh, height and the side length for the square top and bottom, um, using all the information that's given in the problem. Um, that will depend on more than one variable, unfortunately. But then there's additional information like this that can be used to eliminate extra variables so that now you have a function of only one variable. After that, you do exactly the same thing as in previous lessons to find the max or min, whichever is asked for, where you take the derivative, um, set it equal to zero, and find the uh, critical point. And then using your extra information that you're given, you can find the value of all other variables uh, from that. I mean, this is not the only problem with type that we have in this lesson, but this illustrates the, uh, the general procedure. Is there any questions about, uh, about this one? Okay. All right. Um, on to the next one. Um, so it's a similar situation. Um, so we're making boxes. And uh, what we know about the boxes is um, we have a fixed uh, volume, so 24 uh, cubic inches. Um, so these are going to be uh, fairly small boxes. Um, and then the uh, bottom and top are rectangular uh, this time, so 2x by 4x. Uh, we don't know what x is, but we just know that um, one dimension will be twice uh, the other. Um, and uh, so the volume will be 2x times 4x times whatever the height is, and that must equal 24. Uh, we have a cost per square inch for the top and bottom, and then we have a cost per square inch for the side. So it's pretty similar 
to the uh, 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 to the previous problem in terms of the uh, information that's given. Um, and so the actual question is, what should the height of a container be um, to um, to uh, minimize cost? Now, um, here, this last sentence is uh, your clue that you should not expect the numbers to work out nicely. Um, that you're going to have to round to uh, two decimal places. All right, so we have a uh, visual here. Uh, so we have uh, 2x and 4x, and then we have this mystery height. Um, that's what the final answer is going to be. So that's what it's actually, actually asking for. Um, but chosen so that the cost is, is minimum. Okay. So, so the height, or for it, be referred to as uh, um, H, All right, so volume normally length times width times height, but we're given uh, two of these dimensions, the length and width, so we'll just fill those in. So 2x times 4x times whatever h is. Um, so if we work that out, uh, 8x squared h, and that must be equal to 24, that's what's given. So we can use that, uh, so x squared times h, that must be equal to 3. So we'll take this into account. This is how our two unknowns uh, this x and also the height are related, and that's going to help us later on. So now the idea is to express the cost in terms of these two unknowns, x and h. Okay. Um, so what we have here. Um, uh, we go back to our costs. Top and bottom are three dollars ninety cents per square inch. Sides four ninety per square inch. So here, this is the area of a top and bottom. So the top will be length times width, uh, but we have top and bottom to consider, thus a factor of two, um, and, uh, and that's multiplied by the cost per square inch. Here are two of the sides, uh, width times height over dimensions. We have two of them multiplied by its cost per, uh, per square inch, and the same for the other two sides that have a dimension L times H. But uh, the length and width are 2X and 4X, respectively. So now, um, well, sometimes, sometimes it can be easier to work in terms of generic dimensions or if you're dealing with you know, surface area or volume or something like that. But then when we know something about the dimensions, then we can go ahead and fill all that in. Um, so I'll fill in the length and width. Um, so uh, 2x and 4x uh, throughout here. Uh, the height is still unknown. Um, so now all of these numbers have to be worked out. So we just multiply everything out. Um, and from here, uh, multiplying on the constants, 390 times 2 times 2 times 4 is 62.4 x squared. And then everything else is going to be some number times x times h. And so if we multiply all these constants, and these are like terms now. These can be combined, and we get uh, 58.8. So this is our function that describes the total cost in terms of x and the height. Now we need to express this in terms of only one variable um, if we want to find a minimum. Um, so we use this relationship from before. X squared times H was found to be equal to 3. So then if I solve for X, um, so I divide both sides uh, by H, and then take the square root. So X is square root of 3 over H. So notice as X increases, H decreases, which makes sense because we have a fixed um, volume. So if you're going to increase one dimension, you have to decrease the other one uh, to compensate. So now what I can do is take this value of x and substitute it throughout here so that what we're left with would be a function of only h. So 
So here I've taken that expression for x and put it in here for x squared and then for x over here. And now there's a bit of simplifying that has to be done. Uh, here, the square root and the square just cancel, so I have 62.4 times 3 over h, and that's what gives me this here. Um, and then here I have square root of h in the denominator, but then just a plain old h in the numerator. So, uh, so here we have h to the first, and this is h to the minus 1 half. If you multiply those together, you add the exponents, and you get h to the plus 1 half, which is why we have a square root of h under the square root, so we have h under the square root sign, but in the numerator. So here is our cost again, that we're trying to find a minimum of, <clears throat> expressed as a function of only h. So now we're able to do what we've done in previous lessons, and uh, take the derivative and set it equal to zero. Um, so remember, derivative of 1 over h is minus 1 over h squared. So that's where this term comes from. And then here I have, um, here I have h to the 1 half. Well, the derivative of that's going to be 1 half h to the minus 1 half. So that's going to give me a factor of 2. So this 58.8 gets divided by 2. And then uh, I have h to the minus 1 half in a derivative. So that's why this h is under a square root sign, but in the denominator now. Um, whoops. All right, so then I just move this term to the other side. And I want to get a power of h all by itself. Uh, so if I multiply both sides by h squared, and then this number I have here, 29.4 times square root of 3, I want to divide by that, so it goes down over here. So now, so basically you're trying to get all the numbers on one side, and all the h's on the other side. Um, so here I have h squared, and then I have h to the minus 1 half. So you multiply those together, you have to add the exponents. Um, so if I have 2 and minus 1 half, what I'll have is h to the 3 halves um, here on the uh, um, left side. But I want h. Can anyone tell me? From here, what is the next thing I do, or I would have my calculator do, to um, to get the value of h? How do we deal with that three halves exponent? Anyone? How do you isolate H? Oh, you multiply the um, reverse diffraction, multiply on the other side. I, I, I'm sorry, I cannot understand you. Take the fraction, reverse it, multiply on the other side. Oh, we're not gonna, uh, we're not gonna multiply. This is H to the three halves power. Yeah, take the exponent. Take the other side. Okay. Do it both sides. All right, to what power? So what's this, three, take two thirds? Yes. Um, so, because you want to cancel out those exponent, that exponent. So, to raise both sides to be two thirds power. 
So when you do this, you're multiplying the exponents. So then you'll get h to the first on the left side. And if you work this out on your calculator, then this is what you get at least rounded to two decimal places, 2.38. And that's your final answer. Um, so that is uh, it was, what was asked for was the height of a box uh, in inches, and uh, this is what it turns out to be. So remember your laws of exponents, they come up again and again. <coughs> Okay, now for a different sort of problem, dealing with uh, projectile motion. Um, so here we have uh, a particle um, that's traveled uh, this distance in feet after, after a certain amount of time. <coughs> um, so what is asked for is um, at t equals four, what's the velocity? Now velocity is a rate of change of distance traveled or displacement uh, with respect to time. So to get velocity, you need to take the derivative. Um, so if we go ahead and do that. Um, so there's our same function again. So now you take the derivative, which will be a bit more straightforward than what we just saw. Um, and then you just go ahead and substitute in uh, t equals four. Um, and work all it out. So here, a much easier problem than the first two. Um, and uh, so we end up with, um, this is the velocity is uh, um, the derivative of distance. So, so velocity is um, 112 uh, feet per second based on the units that are given for the original function. Um, and that's it. So, um, so, so whenever you see you have a function that's describing uh, position as a function of time, uh, the derivative will be velocity. Um, second derivative would uh, be acceleration. <clears throat> okay, so that's just kind of a warm up. So now we have another projectile problem. Um, so we have, uh, here's our position function. Um, so what's asked for uh, three things. The first is, what is the maximum height? So this function gives the height, so vertical position. Um, and so we need to find the maximum of this function. And again, don't expect the numbers to work out uh, nicely, although sometimes they do. Um, so you go ahead and uh, take the derivative as usual. And then uh, set it equal to zero since we're interested in finding the uh, maximum. All right. Um, so then we just have 520 equals Forty t. So then we just divide both sides by forty, and the numbers do work out. Well, this number at least does work out nicely. T equals thirteen. Now that's the time at which the projectile reaches maximum height, but it's the actual height that is desired here. Um, so we have to take that value of time and substitute that back into the original function. So S of 13 is the maximum height, and then you would grind that out on your calculator and get this rather large number. So 44,480 feet um, is the uh, maximum height. <clears throat> okay. um, the next thing he's asked for is, at what time will a projectile hit the ground? Um, so you want the height uh, to be zero. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your original function 
And so S of T is set that uh, equals zero since that gives the height at any time. Um, so what we have here is a quadratic equation to solve. Um, now, uh, you can factor, uh, all of these numbers are divisible by uh, 20. Um, so when you uh, do that, you get the minus 20 and then t squared plus 26t plus uh, 2040 is equal to zero. So at least uh, this makes the numbers uh, um, a little nice. Oh, wait. Um, sorry, I goofed here. B should be minus because I'm factoring minus 20 out of this whole thing. Therefore, um, that becomes just t squared by itself. And these signs have to change. Okay. Um, so now the idea is to uh, factor uh, this. And when you do, um, we get uh, these values here. So 60 and 34. So 60 and 34 are the two roots. Um, so it's at these values of time when the projectile uh, is at height zero, but uh, time has to be positive. Um, so we discard this one. So t equals 60 is uh, the answer for uh, for that one. We, so this happens sometimes where you're trying to solve for a certain value and you get multiple solutions, but you'll have maybe uh, only one solution makes sense in the context of a problem. That's, that's something to... to uh, take into account, and we're going to see that in one of the uh, other problems in this lesson. Um, and then as, for, as far as the rate at which projectile is falling when it hits the ground, well, we know it's hitting the ground at time 60. The rate uh, at which it's falling, that's going to come from a derivative, because remember, the derivative is the rate of change. Um, all right. Now, we got the derivative before, so minus 40t plus 520. So now we're going to take this value of time from a previous part and substitute it in here and uh, work all that out, and we get minus 1880. Um, now, keep in mind that um, uh, as far as um, entering the uh, answer into box, you're actually going to enter a positive value. Um, right, it's 1880, not 1800. Um, and the reason for that is it's asking at what rate is a projectile falling? So in terms of what's asked for, let's take into account the fact that it'll be negative at height is uh, decreasing. Well, if this were to come up on a test and you entered minus 1880, I would still give you credit for it. Okay. Um, now, uh, for this problem, we're again dealing with a box. <clears throat> this time it will not have a top. Um, so it's just going to be sides and bottom. Um, and here's a piece of cardboard that we're starting with. So 63 feet by 135 feet. So pretty dang big box. Um, and uh, so the idea is you can take this large piece of cardboard and you're going to cut from each corner a square um, of uh, unknown dimension um, uh, x. And the idea is after you cut out those squares, then you can fold the sides up and get the sides of a box that way. So whatever dimension of a square you're cutting out, that's going to end up dictating the height of the uh, uh, box. Um, so is that, the question is, what's the side length of the squares that are to be cut out so that the volume of a box is uh, going to be at a, uh, a maximum. Um, 
So if I let X be this side length that we're trying to get. So, so what I mean is, uh, since you're cutting out an X by X square on each corner, then um, to get the side lengths of a box, um, you have to take into account that from each side, you, you have two squares that, that are deducting from uh, that length. So 135 minus 2X and 63 minus 2X, these will be the side lengths of a box, in other words, the dimensions of the base. Um, so then, um, and since X will be the height, since you're taking those sides and folding them up afterwards, um, that gives us the area um, of a base. Um, let me make it a little clearer. So uh, will be the, the product of these two side lengths. And then if we multiply that by the uh, height, that would give us the volume. Um, All right, so then this times X would be the um, overall volume. So since that's what we want to find a maximum of, um, we need to uh, I'll call this V of X. We need to take the derivative of this and set it equal to zero. So, so here's that same function that gives the volume. So uh, uh, length times width times height as a function of x, the side, square side length we're cutting out. So then this has to be multiplied out. And what you get um, is this. And now you can go ahead and take the derivative um, and set this uh, equal to 0. Um, now this is. Um, a quadratic equation. What I would recommend in this case, since the numbers are um, not so nice, is uh, uh, actually yeah, the, the, the numbers are nice in this case. Um, is uh, factoring So here I'm just using the uh, uh, quadratic formula. Um, so then if you work all this out on your calculator, uh, the numbers work out not to be whole numbers, but at least uh, decent uh, fractions. Um, whoops. So we get 105 over 2 and 27 over 2. Um, now, which is it? Well, um, suppose you take both of these x values and you substitute them up here to get the side lengths, to get the overall dimension. Um, so, for instance, if I take this one, 105 over 2, uh, 135 minus 105, that's fine. But here, if I take 63 minus 2x, that would be 63 minus twice this, which is 105. I'd have a negative width, uh, which makes no sense. So this one, 27 over 2, that is the uh, final answer. Um, so cutting a square of that size on, out of each of the four corners and then folding the sides up from there would give the most possible volume. Any questions about that one?
right, this is the last one. Um, now, I don't have a, actually, I want to have a picture of this, and I do have one available, but in a different file. Um, okay. Alright, so I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this real quick um, and embed it in here. Stop it. Stop that. So I'm not sure what this thing is doing, but Sorry, it looks like it's updating a bunch of things on me. And hopefully it'll stop momentarily. Okay. Stop that. Sorry, I don't know why it's doing this. Okay, that's what I wanted. Um, okay, so we're building a rectangular pen, and then we have these two fences in the uh, interior. Um, and um, we have a fixed total area inside, so it's going to be 2,006 square feet no matter what. Um, so this fencing all along a boundary, $20.40 per meter. Um, and then these two interior fences only $15 per meter. So we want to express the total cost um, in terms of uh, X and Y, um, and then try to uh, find X and Y that will minimize the cost given uh, that the pen's gonna be something that, that looks like this. Okay, so, um, All right, so given that the area is uh, 2,006 uh, square meters, well, the area in terms of X and Y is just going to be X times Y. 
So that relationship is going to help us uh, because we can use it to solve for y in terms of x. So now the goal is just going to be to find x. Um, we were to have some of this extraneous space here. Um, <coughs> so we can just find x that will minimize the cost. Then we can go back to this equation at the very end and solve for y. So now we need to um, try to express the cost of this whole uh, structure in terms of the x and y and the information that we're given. So first we need to know how much exterior fencing we will have and interior fencing. So the exterior fencing would be 2x plus 2y. So we have this y, this y, and then this x, this x. So 2x plus 2y is a perimeter of the exterior fence. But then y is equal to 2006 over x, so we can take that into account. So this is how much exterior fencing we need in terms of x. Now, it's the cost that we're trying to minimize. Uh, so we just multiply that by the uh, cost uh, per foot, so $20.40. Then we do the same thing with the interior fencing. So if we go back to a picture. We have this uh, interior fence of length X and this one of length X. So we have 2X total of interior fencing. So the cost, we just multiply that by $15 per foot. So 30X is the cost there. So now we know the cost of both the exterior and interior fencing. And we can add all that together and get our cost function. So here's for the interior fencing and then the exterior fencing. And then we uh, have a couple like terms that we can combine. Um, so as we see that uh, as X increases, this part of a cost increases, this part of a cost decreases. So what is the ideal balance? Um, so now we can proceed as usual and um, take the derivative and set it equal to zero. Um, so then we have uh, 70.8 from a coefficient rule. And then remember, derivative of one over x is once again, minus one over x squared. So then if we move this term to the other side, and like before, get all the x's on one side, all numbers on the other side. Uh, so multiplying both sides by x squared and dividing both sides by 70.8. And uh, this actually works out to be a, uh, a nice number, uh, 1,156. And that happens to be a perfect square. Uh, so we get uh, um, 34 uh, feet. So that turns out to be X. Um, and then to get Y, we go back to the equation we had before that relates them. Uh, y is 2006 over X. So we put this X value in here. And we get, that's also a nice number, turns out to be 59. Um, so... So that's what we get. Uh, we choose X to be 34 and Y to be 59. We're going to have uh, that amount of uh, the pen of that area, 2,006 square feet, but it's going to be at the minimum cost. Um, So anytime you have a problem of finding a max or min or something that depends on multiple variables, use whatever information relates them. Uh, generally, there's some kind of constraint, like in these problems we saw that there was a, um, like a uh, you know, fixed area, fixed volume, something like that, that would allow you to express one unknown in terms of the other. Um, so then you can work with the usual procedure of finding the, um, uh, max or min of a function of, of one variable where you deduce as before, take a derivative, set it equal to zero, and be sure to dismiss any um, possible solutions 
that just don't make uh, physical sense, like a you know, time value being negative or a uh, dimension uh, being negative. All right, so questions about any of these? Now, um, be sure to attempt a practice test um, you know, and, and make sure you try to go through it um, within the uh, time limit of uh, two hours. You can uh, take as many attempts as you like uh, so that when you go ahead and take the real thing, you'll be ready for it. Um, so, um, so, so at some point I'll be sending out a, a Canvas uh, message that has the uh, password um, for a test. So be sure to pay attention to your Canvas messages. All right, so I'll stop recording at this point and your